BlackRock targets Japan's climate tech and investment push, according to Larry Fink. Um, I did see this, I think maybe uh, somebody else, Jasmine AI. We'll give him a shout out here in a second. But look at this for a second. It's the CEO, as in Larry Fink, sees English finance zones creating opportunities for smaller companies. Um, I've gone ahead and blown this up. Now, you got to keep in mind, this was published a couple months ago, roughly, give or take. But Larry Fink did speak with the Nikkei back on October 6th with that visit. Now, why am I stirring up something from the past? Well, it's a nice outline for what we are talking about with XRP. <clears throat> but like you see on your screen, they are the largest asset manager, $10 trillion, right? Um, BlackRock looks to partner with Japanese businesses to invest in decarbonization technology. Now, now where am I going with this? Well, not the last Jasmine video, but I think maybe the one before that or the one before that, um, I did talk about this whole thing of NCCC, right? The National Carbon Credit Consortium. And I kind of got some criticism from a certain person who is no longer welcome here ever again, by the way. Uh, but I won't ever give a, I won't state who that is. But um, nonetheless, that person pointed out, oh, I'm just a rotten guy because of the whole thing of carbon credits. Hey, guess what? I'm not saying I'm a big fan of it all, okay? I also understand if we're going to be picking our poison here, then I might as well stop talking about quant. I might as well stop talking about Stellar. I might as well stop talking about XRP. At the end of the day, there's so much stuff going on. If you connect all of it and seeing all these people coming back from Davos for crying out loud, well, World Economic Forum or something, hey, I get it. I'm not going to stand on the sidelines and flood myself out of generational wealth, whether a person is in line with, you know, like you were, you were doing a bad thing. All right, enough about that person. Here's the point. Decarbonization technology. CEO Larry Fink said in an interview, adding that the company is considering expanding staffing at its Japanese arm. Now, it's not going to say anything about Jasmine, but hear me out. I will give you some evidence to support the claims that you can go from speculation to confirmation when you look into the bigger picture. And I will give some shout outs to Jasmine AI and a few other people from the Jasmine community in regards to the research. So Larry Fink spoke back then in October. In that trip to Japan, he had desert dinner with a few people, but one in particular is who? Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and major global investors. Now, I will state this. Do you remember the old video of Kins, um, of uh, Abe, I should say, right? Shinzo Abe, where he was saying back in 2015, they're going to have an initiative to uh, invest in um, these startups, right? To get you know the United States to come on board and invest in all these Japanese startups and how it's gonna really ramp up things for this new initiative that Japan was trying to get going on to contribute towards the bigger picture of things of the smart cities and society 5.0. Well, that happened. How do we know that happened? We'll get more into that part of the coverage here in a bit, back to a reference of the old research. But look at this: BlackRock's focus is on the new technologies for the transition to a lower carbon society. Fink stressed the importance of research and development to bring down the cost of clean energy, citing examples such as Japan's work on hydrogen power. Interesting. You know, when we talk about Tadashi Morita and everything he's done and contributed towards power grids and clean energy, and how about Yoshida, right? What he's got going on with Dreamforce. You already have two key players they're already connected to the government. They're already at the forefront, forefront with a very impressive resume. Here's a quote. We see some wonderful opportunities here in Japan to co-invest in, with some of major Japanese companies as they move from brown to green. Well, some people say, well, why don't they just get involved with Hedera? But the whole thing is this. <clears throat> You'd be right. But Hedera with Japan, I haven't seen enough evidence for that. But I see a lot of evidence for <clears throat> Jasmine and especially the likes of maybe BlackRock. Why is that? Well, for one, is how they already have positioned themselves. So for one, they're also exploring such investments in the United States and South Korea. And if you think about it, Jasmine has also got some of these things going on. 
Larry Fink has also mentioned that uh, he noted that the broader adoption of electric vehicles will necessitate a resilient power global power grid. Again, back to my reference of Tadashi Morita with what he's done with glo- you know, the power grids over the Japan and so on. Um, we did some extended research. Shout out to Neil X Tricks. Shout out to, you know, Minilaguar talking about like a lot of this deep dive stuff that we got going on. We, we gave you examples about, um, what was it, Honda specifically. Uh, we talked about even Toyota. And we, we were talking specifically about, for instance, you know, those technologies of these, you know, autonomous vehicles. And um, even on the Teslas as we speak, right? that Elon Musk has with Tesla, uh, was it all over the front and the size, all these sensors, all these IOT devices. And we're, we know that Sony is looking to team up. Yeah. That's what it was with Honda for these quote unquote electric vehicles with all this internet of things, things going on in the future. I hate to say things over and over, but we've already been there. We've done that. We did the research on that. So to see these statements from Larry Fink quoted from the Nikkei. I think it's definitely worth sharing. I mean, it's it's you know, it's not like oh, Max is just creating hopium, maybe a little bit. I mean, like you know, Will Fix does that, but I'm not trying to hop on the bandwagon like what Will Fix is doing. I love our brother Will Fix, but what I'm trying to make a point of is for all the people that are going to get into some of these assets that we're talking about all the time, and you're just going to jump into it. When everything is ready, sent to the moon and beyond, how is that a good recipe for your portfolio? You know, you're going to jump into it when everybody else um, is on board. No, look at Bitcoin or, you know, BTC, I should say Bitcoin. Look at BTC back in the day, right? So many people didn't hop on that. If you would have hopped on that, that would have been life changing, right? I'm guilty of that, right? I knew about it back in 2010. Um, didn't get into it until about 2016. Didn't get to buy a you know full one of those, but it gave me the path forward to buy altcoins back in 2021. But getting back on topic, BlackRock chief, as in Larry Fink, said the asset manager is evaluating expanding its Tokyo office. Quote, if we see the big opportunities here, let's say in infrastructure and brown to green, we will have larger staffs here in Japan and in Tokyo, making sure that we are local. <clears throat> Who already has the plug and the connect, as I've always mentioned? It's Jasmine. Who's the first that's regulatory compliant in Japan? That's why it's called the Bitcoin Japan. It's Jasmine. Who already has a, a key connection to compliance? It's Jasmine. Through who? Genki Oda. Genki Oda is part of what? Again, SBI Japan. All these things, especially when it comes to Bitpoint. So he is your enabler. Do you think that... Nobody is going to get the memo when it comes to this. I think somebody is going to at least explain, hey, here's the industry players. I understand A-star stands out. A-star is a different use case. Okay. And I think A-star is solid, but it's a different use case. Because we are talking about, and I joke about all the time, the Rice Corrupt Consortium. But again, back to the whole thing of, you know, going from brown to green. Say what you want. Jasmine put a lot of focus on this, and we're going to get more into this. Another great statement. Quote, there's a great, or excuse me, there's great opportunities to move from brown to green, and Japan could be a leader in that movement. We're going to see more opportunities for Tokyo to be a financial hub, Fink said, at the market, as the market becomes more appealing to financial services and investment management companies. Again, back to the reference that we mentioned before, and that is this. When is... The world going to finally take Jasmine serious when it comes to finance democracy. Talk about cross board payments and so on. We understand they're not to their layer two solution or the web three cloud solution with Polkadot. But countless times when I got into this and I didn't see anybody sharing this specific article, and this is why I'm also sharing it with you guys. And that is Fink did point out what Japan needs to do for its growth, even though Shinzo Abe pointed that out. R.I.P. Shinzo Abe, he did single out robotics. Jasmine, what do we know when it comes to robotics? They're all over that. How so? Well, think about it, guys. Think about the whole thing of wits, wits, wherever way you want to pronounce it. Wits with that 
Toyota connection is absolute game changer. Artificial intelligence. What is Jasmine looking to do with artificial intelligence? They're looking to scale up with this layer two solution. That's just not just an L2 solution, but a layer two AI blockchain solution. Decarbonization through what? And triple C, as we know, and countless other examples, the Rice Grub Consortium, as I always joke about, as areas of particular promise. So everything that we've outlined so far and in the research in the past all is in line with this vision of what Fink is looking to do with where they're trying to go for the future for Japan. That's why I'm bringing it to you guys. Not just because, oh, it's cool to talk about it. It is cool to talk about it. But is there something actually solid there? And even if I'm wrong completely, you're going to tell me that you would rather take a chance on some garbage meme token that has some bat crap Inu on it, right? And throw your money at that on something that somebody developed, uh, you know, I don't know, in, you know, third grade Fiverr class or something like that. Nothing against Fiverr. It just looks like a little kid put it together. Some little kids do great jobs, right? But my point is, it just doesn't look professional. You got to throw $300, $500, $1,000 at that because you want to see that have a pump and dump and you make a short term gain. But you're not going to look at Jasmine sitting at 0 0.0052 because it had a pullback and say to yourself, oh, well, Jasmine doesn't do much. I don't like it. It's pulled back too much. Not realizing that it runs in correlation with BTC and Ethereum consistently on the one day chart, one week chart, seven day, one month. 90 day, you name it, 30 day, and so on. And say to yourself, I could buy a lot of this. I could buy a big bag of Jasmine and get over a hundred thousand of these, basically. I'm just saying you go out and do it, it's not financial advice. But basically, for $520 plus a, a fee, or if you go to a centralized exchange, not much of a fee, right? My point is this: we recognize opportunity. What happens? When this comes to light, you're going to wait to see this on the news. BlackRock, headlines, BlackRock, or Fox Business, just like we showed on the XRP segment. When you guys see this on the chopped up version, you won't see that part. That's why we always say watch the shows, watch the other videos, even if you don't hold those assets. But the point is, you're going to wait till Fox Business interviews Larry Fink again to say, hey, Mr. Fink, Larry, whatever. You invested in these technically uh, Internet of Things companies that started off back in 2014, 2015. Why so? And he explains that one of them happens to be, yeah, there's this company. They're called Bitcoin in Japan. They're called Jasmine, blah, blah, blah. What? Really? I mean, can you imagine what the price would be just off of just because of his endorsement? You know, I I believe more into utility in motion compared to just a big wig like that giving us endorsement. But that is worth pointing out. All right. So enough about that. Maybe it sounds like a hype, but hear me out. <clears throat> Fink expressed bullish view on Japan from a long term perspective of 10 to 20 years. Now, we understand that by 2050, and I know that sounds just nuts. Society 5.0 is, is fully done. OK, I mean, they're they're. What they're looking to accomplish is, is mainly towards like the beginning of 2030 and 2050, 2050 as in 5.0 um, is literally like a national thing. Like that's the standard. But Larry Fink welcomed the Kushida government's push to shift household assets from savings to investment. You know, this is the whole notion of like, you know, like you'll see other content creators talk about shout out to rich common sense crypto, right? He talks about like how he doesn't have a savings account anymore. He has a checking account because we need to still pay bills, right? We still live in this world of fiat. But when you see things this like this of what's posted here, a shift uh, from savings to investment, it kind of makes you think because this is literally the biggest asset manager in the world, which is BlackRock. And here's this quote. The administration has new plans related to NISA as a foundation to transform this giant pool of savings and to have more of a domestic policy for growth through taking savings and investing for the long run. He said, 
referring to the government's tax-exempt stock investment program. So remember in the past, you had that whole thing mentioned last year of these incentives for Japan, especially for businesses and so on. It's kind of like the extreme opposite of Biden's policy um, of capital gains tax. Again, I'm not trying to make it this divisive or anything, you know, Democrats and Republicans, hey, you vote for who you want. But that is a real thing. And then on top of that, again, back to what Taro Kono did with data free flow with trust, you know, that basically the blueprint, if you will, for what is going on in Europe and what we introduced to here in the United States. There's all these plans, but I wouldn't dismiss it. And there's another quote from him again, as Larry Fink, we have always found that Japan is a welcoming place enjoys success in Japan. He believes the special zone is going to encourage smaller companies that come to Japan and feel like they have a real opportunity, he said of the plan. Fink emphasizes that Japan, which carries significant government debt, think about this for a second, needs to aim for growth by bringing together private and public funds. And when you research more about Jasmine, there are so many connections to both what, guys? private and public funds it's not strictly uh you know data democratization it's also finance democracy but look what it says here this is what could be a great opportunity if the pieces start moving he moved to a positive changes in japan uh saw the younger generations increase interest in startups and a shift away from focus on big corporations not necessarily saying you know, not recognizing BlackRock, but still a, a, a shift from that focus on bigger corporations. Um, and then it goes into more about the whole thing of attracting interest from U.S. investors, Europe, Asia, Middle East. It's a sign of growing interest in Japan. Yes, it definitely is. Now, is that all I got in regards to this? Well, the answer is no. And what I want to bring to you is now this whole thing from Jasmine U.S. or not Jasmine U.S. I apologize. Jasmine A.I., and it is in the reference of this whole thing of, did you know, quote, BlackRock targets Japan's climate tech in investment push. That's why I share that with you. Like he says, he can name a Japanese company pushing for carbon neutrality and decarbonization technology through token issuance and the blockchain. Take a wild guess. Again, back to the whole thing, even from the XRP segment of the night of tokenization of real world assets and um cross-border payments you name it right yes i could think of that name as well so what i want to do now is for all of the naysayers they're saying this is just way too speculative this is way too over my head and if, even if you're a new person to this show this is the first time you ever watched this show and you're like this maximus guy maximus crypto he's full of it i don't know what he's talking about because you know what i have never seen an example of a big company with a lot of capital or a billionaire who went all in on Japan. And guess what my answer would be to you? My answer would be, well, welcome to the channel. I'm glad that you're here. I would never disrespect anybody else's different opinion. It's not about that. It's not about me being right. But I will state this. There is another billionaire. And we'll take you back to the old research because let's face it, some people have never seen maybe this a few months ago. But this is from my research on October uh ninth so let's go ahead and share this i'm actually resharing a part of this video not the whole thing but you're welcome to watch this it was a supreme deep dive it's called jasmine sony and honda warren buffett the 13th international iot conference the road to 17 dollars 2026 kpi target yeah i posted this on october 9th why am i sharing this because it's warren buffett again let's have a re-reminder of this he was a billionaire who invested in what, guys? The Japanese startups and what was connected to because it was significant. And he was very pleased with their investments. What about this next phase of what we're entering into? What about this next phase of what BlackRock is going to do? Are we going to wait and sit on the sidelines and just let it all blow up, right, to the moon, as the saying goes, and then jump into it? Do not listen to the flutters other than just maybe being open to the idea, but don't let it, any of these guys, I'm just going to throw this out, flood you out of generational wealth. And I will keep saying it and I will never shut up about it. And that is this. I do believe Jasmine's part of that mix of future generational wealth. If you're willing to stay the course and get to the finish line, like I've always mentioned before, it's a marathon, 
This is not a sprint. It's never a sprint. Listen to this, especially if you're new. Let's go ahead and play this. Let's go ahead and full screen it. Here we go. Yesterday, Warren Buffett did an interview on CNBC and discussed his recent investments in five Japanese companies. In the interview, he also discussed how he thinks about investing in general and why he thought these Japanese companies in specific were such attractive investments. We're going to watch this entire clip, then go through the key points so you can better understand Warren Buffett's investment process and become a better investor yourself. So with that being said, let's hop over to YouTube and let's just start this interview. And I will be pausing here and there to provide some additional insight. So let's why just did this right trip happen and why did those investments happen to begin with? Well, the investments began maybe close to four years ago, and I was uh, looking at company after company as I do every day. And uh, I just thought these were big companies. They were companies that I generally understood what they did. Some was similar to Berkshire and that they owned lots of different interests. And they were selling at what I thought was a ridiculous price, uh, particularly the price compared to the interest rates prevailing at that time. And, and Okay, so I'm going to stop the video right there really quickly because so far Warren Buffett has already said that these five Japanese companies that he purchased were companies that he understood. So they were within his circle of competence. He thought that they were selling for attractive prices. He basically thinks that they are like Japanese Berkshire Hathaway. So for those of you who do not know, these five Japanese companies are, they, they essentially are conglomerates. They own a bunch of different other companies in Japan. So that's why he's saying that he understood them and they were a lot like Berkshire Hathaway just over in Japan. Then once again, he does say that he thought that they were selling for attractive prices relative to what interest rates were at the time. And he's going to elaborate on that a little bit more here. And uh, so I started buying all five of the, uh, the five largest trading uh, uh, companies and uh, uh, by my 90th birthday, August uh, 30th of uh, uh, 2000, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, uh, we had bought just somewhat over 5% of each company, and we were buying identical amounts. So we announced at that time that we bought this 5% interest in each of the five. I wrote a letter to the CEOs of each of the companies saying the same thing, that that, that uh, we would never buy, Berkshire would never buy uh, more than 9.9% uh, without their consent. That, uh, uh, and that was my word, it was Berkshire Hathaway's word, and, and uh, uh, they all welcomed us in, and their results have exceeded our expectations. Uh, since we purchased the group, I think I think their dividends on average have gone up seventy percent or something like that, and and we now own seven point four percent of each of the companies. And uh, okay, so just to pause quickly again, Warren Buffett basically says that they initially started buying these companies back in August of twenty twenty. I don't know if you guys all remember when that news was circling around, but he did in fact buy these five companies all the way back in twenty twenty. And basically, he is saying that the investments in general have far exceeded his and Berkshire's expectations for what they thought would happen over the next just few years. He says in this interview that the dividends on average have already increased by 70% since he purchased them um, just, just a few years ago. So far, these investments have done incredibly well for Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. And now what they're doing is they're increasing their stake. in. See this image? This is the name and ticker symbol of my number one AI stock. To in these five Japanese companies. So they already had a pretty massive position and now they're simply just adding to it because everything is going well. And again, the investments have exceeded what they were even expecting. So now let's continue on. I just, uh, Greg and I together, we, we wanted to come over and, and, and uh, talk to them. And uh, so we got on a NetJets plane and <laughs> plug and, uh, and flew over. And we have had a terrific time meeting each of the five sequentially 
uh, over the last two days, and it's been fascinating. And we feel even better about what, but we couldn't feel better about the investment. And and over that time, we've sold periodically the end denominated bonds. So more or less, not we don't do it precisely, but. So that part, once again, he talks about yen denominated bonds. What about where we're entering in 2024 with yen denominated stable coins and then have the pairings with, for instance, the likes of Jasmine and so on um, is always been game changer. Now, for the people that have never watched this show and are not part of our community and so on and your first time person and so on, I know there's going to be some people here. They're going to say. Why are you referencing Warren Buffett? This guy's the most anti-crypto guy out there. And I'd be like, yeah, you're right. You're right. But guess what? What is an example of that gentleman that you saw from this video that we chopped up to share for an example? What's the point he was making? The point was Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have already invested into these startups. These startups are connected, for instance, uh, a good example could be like the, the connected to crypto. But the point is that on the back end of things, Berkshire Hathaway is already invested into it. It's not like they're directly investing into like BTC or any other particular cryptocurrency. So that's something I wanted to share. And the other thing, of course, the point I'm trying to make is back to the example of can some of these big shot billionaires or, you know, a Berkshire Hathaway or a BlackRock invest in, you know, something like, what Jasmine's got going on in Japan? And the answer basically is yes, that can actually be a real thing for all the things that we mentioned before. Now, is there more about this? Well, of course there is. I wanted to just leave you guys with that. So I want to jump back to this once again. And why this? Well, you know, I just shared it. Again, what's it say? Fink emphasizes that Japan, which carries significant government debt, needs to aim for growth by bringing together private and public funds. Interesting. Jumping back to this. This is from Reddit. Shout out to the people on, you know, for the Reddit community. So, you know how many times we reference SoftBank? Quite a few times, right? This key highlight pounds home all of the research done tonight. SoftBank's Group Corporation is a Japanese multinational conglomerate. Founded in 1981, has become the largest and most influential technology and investment companies in the world, you know, recognize. It's known for its diverse portfolio of investments in companies, as well as acquisitions across different sectors, of which include the following. You go back to that Warren Buffett example, diverse portfolio of investments in companies. Then have something like Berkshire Hathaway, invest in what? Just that. Let me show you some more about these different sectors, which include. So for one, telecommunications, SoftBank, as we know, is a major player in the telecommunications industry. They provide a mobile broadband and fixed line services in Japan. SoftBank Mobile is a leading mobile carrier, of course, in the country. Number two, technology, interest. SoftBank has made significant investments in various technology and internet companies globally. For example, it's early investments in Alibaba Group, Yahoo Japan, Arm Holdings, also invested in numerous startups and technology companies covering areas such as, look at this, AI, robotics, biotechnology, and more. Who specializes in all three of those? Jasmine with his connections to WITS. Uh, was it Mofiria for biotechnology, uh, robotics? You name it. Back to the whole thing about robotics. SoftBank has a keen interest in robotics, has developed and required, or excuse me, acquired several robotic companies, um, technology and interests. Let's talk about financial services, because remember when I was talking about finance, democracy, for cross-border payments, Jasmine, you know, we did the whole thing about Ripple and Jasmine uh, through, you know, interledger, basically. Financial services. SoftBank offers financial services through a subsidiary, including banking and insurance. Now, this is a true statement, but listen to it. 
Jasmine has the potential utility for every single one of those industries, hence why I'm also pointing it out to everybody. Obviously, we shouldn't get our hopes up prematurely, right? You know, it's not financial advice. But we shouldn't jump the gun with drawing grandiose conclusions about Jasmine's role and all that. But it helps be aware of the potential as well as concrete existing connections. SoftBank, CyberTrust that we point out in the past in the videos, and especially, especially everything about NCCC, which is the National Carbon Credit Consortium. Now, we're almost towards the end of this outline, and it's a solid outline in my opinion. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I think, not just myself, I think you guys, I think the Jasmine community, the research, that is all brought together. Um, so I do want to give this guy a follow, and it's the first time I've ever seen a tweet from him and so on. But give this guy a follow. His name is Build B, um, Build LB. A lot of followers. Wow. <clears throat> so he says Jasmine and NCCC set to build a digitally managed carbon trading, uh, excuse me, carbon credit trading system. Now, I'm not going to harp back on the whole thing of what NCCC is because you could go back to that video. It's a couple week or two ago, right? But they are using its blockchain tech for release, of course, this next spring. They always mention next spring, but I always think, like, are you referring to this spring? Because, you know, you think about next spring. Anyway, I don't want to get to that. But anyway, carbon credit trading is a new initiative, of course, in Japan and expects to expects, excuse me, to foster a green economy. So if that's the case, can we jump back once again to what Larry Fink was talking about? Yes, we can. How so? Well, let's pull it up just, just in case sometimes people lose track of this. Larry Fink, again, the quote, we see some wonderful opportunities here in Japan to co-invest with some of the major Japanese companies as they move from brown to green. So, I mean, again, at every single turn of the table or whatever you want to call it, it all is in alignment, in my opinion. Look at this for another moment. Jump back to this. I do agree it's a bullish move for Jasmine. And look at this for a second. Let's blow this up a little bit more. Put it up on the other screen. All right. What's this say? Carbon credits are a system in which companies can issue credits based on the greenhouse gas reduction. Let me see if you can see it on the screen. You do. And it also says effects generated through forest protection. Again, don't ever dismiss Yoshida of Jasmine. You ever wonder where, you know, Jasmine comes from, that name? You ever wonder about the Y in Jasmine? It stands for Yoshida, little known fact. Anyway, he's got that thing called, called Dream Forest. Tree planting and the introduction of energy-saving equipment. Um, and can trade between companies. Jasmine is preparing to build a fully digitally managed transaction system using preparatory blockchain technology with a view to release next spring in order to support voluntary credits created by the National Capital Credit Consortium. So here's the thing. Some people will say, I can see BlackRock investing into the NCCC, but I don't see Jazz or I don't see BlackRock, you know, directly doing something with Jasmine. All right, I hear you, but if you understand the connection of Jasmine with the NCCC, then you also understand its utility being activated. And isn't that the perfect example of utility in motion? I think it is. Now we're not done here yet. I want to take you back to this. Let's go to the next page. Here's another familiar face <clears throat> from the Jasmine um, management team, if you will. This is the one and only Taga Takashi Hagawara. And I, I haven't talked about Hagawara a lot, but I have here and there. If you weren't aware of it, he is the director and software development supervisor of what? Of Jasmine. And why he's so significant is because of this statement. Like it says, Jasmine Inc. engaged in software production design for consumer products at Sony Corporation and was a, what does this say here? Uh, responsible for the development and design of PC VIO for many years. We know that. In 2000, this particular person, who is Tagashi Hargawara, 
became CEO of Sony Digital uh, Network Applications, Inc. After serving as a deputy general manager of VIO and mobile business, he became president and representative director in Vision Arts Com uh, Corporation, or Co., Limited. In 2015, he has a, or I should say, he has developed various systems, uh, construction projects based on cloud technology. Again, back to the whole thing of understanding um, why we are going to a Web3 cloud solution with what, guys? Polkadot, right? So if you wonder where was the source of that, I'm just throwing this. This is a little extra information. That's probably why. I would say, I would just call it Hogawara is probably the reason for that. That's good. I like seeing that because it will put Jasmine into the mix of other ones that we talk about. Your, you know, shout to Tim Shea, your Flux, you know, shout to me, my Filecoin, some of these other ones, my BTT. It says that Jasmine is not a one trick pony, right? All right. So, cloud technology to various companies within the group. Since 2020, he has been charged with Jasmine software development. How cool is that? Jumping back to this for just a brief moment. Here is the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake is this, before I give you some more of my own research notes, I should say. You guys are always trying to find out what Binance's position on things. But check this out. This is something that totally flew under the radar. I didn't see anybody retweeting this. If somebody did, okay, whatever. But I did pull this and I changed up the translation from, I think it was Chinese to you know English. But the point is, it's from Binance. Jasmine partners with NCCC to launch NFT-based carbon credit points system. I did see the comment from some of you know, one of my thoughts about Solana and memes and so on. We'll get into that a little bit later. But look at what's mentioned. According to Shenzhen TechFlow, the chief financial officer of Internet of Things platform developer Jasmine announced an active market plan, of course, with NCCC. And the consortium chain ensures everything from carbon tracking to credit generation and consumption. The plan is to use NFTs to clearly identify the rights to each product made by the company that bears the cost of the carbon credits. NFT is tested on ERC-1155. Multiple NFTs can be sent at once without gas. Is there anybody talking about this? I'm not, again, I'm, this is not me tooting my own horn. I thought that was incredibly interesting, okay? Because we know that Jasmine is trying to go to a layer two, but what about what we currently see here? And if anything, how in the world can you do multiple NFTs to be sent at once without gas? Now, in the past, I've stated this, and I've gotten criticism about it. I said, for the future, if you're going to do true, you know, um, we're truly going to scale up. Jasmine could choose to reach out to the quant network through ISOTC 307 working groups because they're already established in Japan. We know also with Overledger that you can have the whole thing of being able to not deal with gas fees because we can quickly switch with Overledger that's blockchain agnostic. Did we not mention this? To other particular blockchains instantaneously. And avoid some of this stuff. Is this as an example? Draw your own conclusion. It is planned to attach NFT to each product and collect NFT through QR code or other means to accumulate points. Interesting. What's a similar model that is doing this, but not necessarily with this specifically? Yeah. Alliance block with Nixera. How do we know that? Remember the whole thing with passports? So it is a real thing that we're talking about. We're actually getting more deeper into this than we thought that we would ever get into this. Connecting the system to the hometown tax system allows points to be redeemed for local specialties, expanding the economic reach of local communities and promoting growth. For over, we're in 2024 now. So for about two years, I've been telling you guys about some of this stuff. I said, watch out in the future jasmine is able to pair up with for instance the dd coin it's able to pair up with all these other things to promote its utility but not just promote its utility but to actually get its utility in motion how do we have confirmation of this from binance 
why is Binance still suppressing Jasmine and having it in monitoring zones and so on? I have no idea. But what is really peculiar is the terminology because it does confirm all of the research. And that in itself is worth paying attention to. If you go back to the older videos, we talk about all of these things for the last two years. Now, in conclusion, the reason why I want to bring this up to you guys is this. And here's my own little notes for you guys, especially if you're a Jasmine holder, if you're a guy who's just, you know, I don't, you're like, I don't believe in Jasmine. Jasmine scam, right? Well, listen to this. Shenzhen's tech flow, like we mentioned, does definitely suggest, especially from the Binance report, literally from Binance, that there's several reasons why Jasmine's active market plan with the National Carbon Credit Consortium, NCCC, and how it aligns with an NFT-based approach to carbon credits and how <clears throat> that could be significant. For one, Jasmine doing this with the NCCC addresses a critical issue. Max, what is the critical issue? The critical issue is that the carbon credit market faces challenges with what, guys? Data transparency. Enter in the whole thing of where Jasmine shines above all when it comes to data democratization. And how so? Because you have, for instance, this problem of double counting. Hedera has also addressed it. And what is Hedera also focused on? Well, one of its many things is focused on. The whole thing of carbon green, going green, going from brown to green, right? Carbon credits, you name it, stuff like that. Double counting. Jasmine also references that. So should we take them more serious? If we take Hedera serious, why would you not take Jasmine serious? Because I looked at Chart, and Chart told me that this thing is down 99%, and I saw a guy named M.E. with a funny uh, uh, puppy dog uh, meme, and he said, Jasmine scam. So I got on board, and I said, yes, I looked at Chart, 99% down, Jasmine scam. Really? That's all the research you're going to do. Okay, fine. Listen to this. So data transparency double counting eliminates that problem and difficulty for local communities to benefit from projects local communities not just the future of what society 5.0 and smart cities and all that jasmine solutions or solution i should say tackles these issues by using blockchain technology for secure carbon tracking and credit generation it tackles a critical issue you mean it doesn't just have one little, little, oh, a possibility of, of utility. Think of how much garbage we're all investing in. I'm guilty of it too, with memes and so on. Hey, guess what? We're coming out with this wallet. And, um, you know, if I don't snort a bunch of, you know what, up my nose and, and, and join this puppy dog project and actually use uh, the money for what's meant to be from investors, uh, we'll have a... Um, a future utility of blah, blah, blah um, chain um, or uh, this specific wallet that has a little bit of utility. Give me a break. Jasmine has so many layers of utility. Quant has so many layers of utility, right? It becomes more and more impressive when you look into it. How about this for a second? Because remember how I mentioned the whole thing of Nixera when it comes to what they got going on with like you know, a utility-based NFT with passports, hear me out. This also solves a critical issue. The innovation of NFTs. What? Jasmine? Really? Listen to this. Attaching NFTs to products, as we know, clearly identifies carbon credit ownership. So this whole thing of Jasmine and NCCC will incentivize consumers through point accumulation and redemptions. Remember how we talked about in the past? Maybe Hara and the rest of the Jasmine team didn't get it crossed perfectly because the language barrier, I don't know. But in the past, it was mentioned coupons for points with Jasmine and the pairing with the DD coin. Now coming to the whole mix of NCCC. Oh, that's, I would take that a lot more serious than, than DD. Nothing against DD. But the accumulation and redemptions, that's utility in motion. This gamifies the process and even potentially increases consumer engagement. Why? Hey, this is cool. I'm using this and it's contributing to the society and I'm getting rewarded for it. That incentivizes the utility to be in motion because people simply like the idea that they're, you know, they're making something, right? 
I get excited because I, I create YouTube videos and talk about this stuff with you guys. And I get a little bit of rewards, not much because, you know, YouTube is like Uncle Sam. They take 30%, but hey, it incentivizes me and people will talk about that. I want to talk about three more things. I know it's quite the deep dive tonight, but if you hold jazz, I mean, you'd be glad that you actually got to hear somebody that's giving you a little bit more of that deeper dive, if you will. No, I'm not talking about Caroline deep dives and pogo sticks. Boosting local economies. This is so crucial to understand the utility in motion for Jasmine. Listen to this for a second. This is my notes for a second. Boom, I just hit my mic. They're going to link the system to the hometown tax system. Again, back to the old reference from Binance on that report. It will create a closed loop where consumers support those local communities by redeeming points for local specialties. Listen to this for a second. What is this going to do? What's going to foster economic growth and incentives? It's basically going to say, hey, everybody participate in this because we're going to give you points, incentives. It's a win-win for not just the big cities, but all over rural areas all over Japan. And they could also apply that same model to other areas, for instance, Southeast Asia and take it worldwide. Um, Listen to this for another one. This is another two good things. What about being able to use this whole thing that we outlined tonight and increase the utility of a already great utility that's not quite there yet? I get it, right? Because we're going to scale up with this layer two. But how do we increase is already like the current utility to the next phase and potentially grow from there? The answer is an innovative application of NFTs in the connection to a real world economic system that adds utility to Jasmine's ecosystem. Remember we talk about being able to expand upon this ecosystem. Do you ever wonder why Jasmine puts so much focus on these grants? They're hoping to get a few key players. So who, who also does this, guys? It's Stellar, right? Stellar comes out with these grants as well, trying to find you know the shining stars, the diamonds in the rough. It's definitely going to attract more users, investors, potentially propelling the value of Jasmine tokens. More investors? Oh, back to the whole thing of Larry Fink. Back to the whole thing of BlackRock. Yeah, absolutely. Can we use the example of Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway? Yes, we really did. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind this, okay, before we wrap it up. Back to the topic of BlackRock because that's – I mean, let's face it, that's probably one of the main reasons why you're here. BlackRock, of course, targets Japan's climate tech in this push, investment push. We know that Warren Buffett invested in Japan, he did, with Berkshire Hathaway, um, in those startups. To me, it makes sense that BlackRock would invest in an Internet of Things platform like Jasmine. How huge would this be for Jasmine? I mean, we're retail holders, we want to know about this. Now, while it's very interesting to speculate all day long about this stuff and create hopium on the potential impact of BlackRock's investment into Jasmine, you have to keep in mind that in light of recent developments, Japan's climate tech, if you will, and Warren Buffett, Buffett's investments into Japanese startups, consider some of these factors before, you know, the impact of how all this can come together. Is there any evidence of BlackRock's investment in Jasmine? Well, of course not. There, there's no evidence of that. It's, a, it's basically recognizing what could happen for the future, just like why we gave you the, the uh, example of Warren Buffett and um, Berkshire Hathaway. But you got to keep in mind that even while this hasn't, ha or this hasn't happened yet in regards to BlackRock and Jasmine, while BlackRock's recent interest in Japan's climate tech sector and Jasmine's focus on data security for IoT does suggest a potential fit, you have to keep in mind that the scale of this would be a great investment of where we can go for the future, especially for BlackRock and so on. And that is basically that it's Jasmine's current market position. Hear me out. I want to give you some examples. So Jasmine, with their current market position, already does enjoy partnerships with some bigwigs. Who are they? They're Panasonic, Hitachi. An additional investment from, for instance, BlackRock could further solidify Jasmine's position, but 
the extent, of course, of this boost would depend on the existing partnership's strength and nature, of course, for the new investment. Um, there's more factors to consider, but my thing I want to bring to you guys is this. BlackRock definitely does show recent activities, like we pointed out from October through the Nikkei, and that they have shown interest in crypto and digital assets, hence why we showed the whole examples from XRP. You got to see the chopped up version. You're not going to see that, but you can check out the XRP video later. And they did launch a private trust for Bitcoin back in 2021. Jasmine, of course, focuses on data security. So they come in hand in hand. And it does align itself with BlackRock's emphasis on what? Listen to this. Remember ESG? Remember when I did the collaborations with Neo X Tricks, Menelagwar? Especially men in Lagar when it comes to ESG. Do you remember what ESG stood for? It stands for environmental, social, and governments. So it does align itself with BlackRock's emphasis on ESG. You already have somebody who's an expert with um, some of these things in regards to power grids and so on with Tadashi Morita. And I think if you look at the greater picture of things, this would have profound influence on BlackRock's long-term investment decisions before we close it out and i know it's a lot of material that we got on this tonight japan does have a growing role continuously here going to 2030 even out to 2050 in regards to his climate tech this definitely does bode well for jasmine's long-term prospects regardless if blackrock went with jasmine or not so even that right there says to me, I'm still going to bet on Jasmine. So in conclusion, that is going to wrap it up in regards to all this. And for me, I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and just be like, oh, I'm going to wait for a big news report from, you know, Fox Business or CNBC uh, when this all finally takes off. I'll be glad that I didn't give into the FUD. I didn't give into everybody else's fear. And I loaded up more on our beloved asset, Jasmine. Could the Jasmine management team do a better job when it comes to their marketing or some of the things that are on X? Um, yes, absolutely. But if we're still going to stick to the notion that, you know, Japan, Sony does a great job when it comes to the products and the products speak for themselves, then that is something I want to apply for the future and recognize where are they going to take this in regards to blockchain. <laughs>